வெல்கம் டு ஏடிசிஎம் த எமர்ஜென்சி மெடிசின் சேனல் டுடே லெட் அஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் ஒன் ஆஃப் த இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் பாஸ்டீரியர் சர்க்குலேஷன் சின்ட்ரோம் தட் இஸ் லேட்ரல் மெடுலரி சின்ட்ரோம் ஆர் வெலன்பர்க் சின்ட்ரோம் ஆஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் சின்ட்ரோம் வி வில் ஆல்சோ லேர்ன் ஹார்னர் சின்ட்ரோம் லேட்ரல் மெடுலரி சின்ட்ரோம் இஸ் அ நியூரோலாஜிக்கல் ப்ராப்ளம் டியூ டு இஸ்கீமியா அந்த லேட்ரல் பார்ட் ஆஃப் த மெடுல in the brain stem so it's a brain stem syndrome normally brain stem syndrome means one sided weakness other sided cranial nerve involvement here there is no weakness but some cranial nerves are involved it results due to the vascular event or ischemia of the uh, blood vessels in the brain mainly in the medulla oblongata of brain stem there are some arteries involved in this problem like you can get a problem in the vertebral artery you can get uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery lateral medullary artery all these arteries can have occlusions rarely it can be due to a demyelinating type of disease or a tumor in the brain stem okay all these things also can present like lateral medullary syndrome but the commonest presentation is due to ischemia or, or occlusion of the blood vessels in the uh brain stem so you can see here the arteries vertebral arteries basilar arteries posterior and inferior cerebellar artery all these things arteries are uh, can produce lateral medullary syndrome problem in this arteries can produce lateral medullary syndrome in that one of the important arteries poica posterior inferior cerebellar artery whereas medial medullary syndrome can be produced by anterior spinal artery so that that is the main difference between this uh, medial medullary syndrome and uh, lateral medullary syndrome we will not be discussing about medial medullary syndrome that can have some weakness and uh, other uh, complications but here there is no actual weakness for the limbs now on the side of the lesion suppose it is right sided lateral medullary syndrome you can have sensory impairment of the face that is because of fifth cranial nerve descending tract is involved that is very important descending tract of the fifth cranial nerve uh, can involve in lateral medullary syndrome so facial sensory loss can be there patient can have ataxia swaying towards the same side of the lesion here cerebellum or olivo cerebellar fibers here actually cerebellum as such is not involved sometimes you can get cerebellar involvement also but uh, most of the time the fibers are involved here cerebellar fibers are involved here patient can have eighth cranial nerve nucleus involvement patient can have vertigo nausea vomiting nystagmus no patient also can have uh, loss of taste because of nucleus and tractus solitarius uh, dysphagia hoarseness of voice vocal cord paralysis diminished gag reflex ninth tenth cranial nerves also involved this is very very important for an er physician because these patients posterior circulation stroke patients especially in the medulla patient can have aspirations aspiration pneumonia complication due to aspiration so we have to be very careful when we are dealing with posterior circulation uh, syndromes now another important problem is horner syndrome descending sympathetic tract up to t1 it can descend it results from the interruption of the sy- sympathetic nerve supply to the eyes and it is characterized by classic triad of meiosis small pupil partial ptosis that is very important whereas in third nerve palsy you get complete ptosis and uh, dilatation of pupil loss of hemifacial sweating and hydrosis so these are the co- combinations you can get in patient who is having lateral medullary syndrome induced horner syndrome horner syndrome can be a part of other diseases also now on the opposite side spinothalamic tract are involved because the pain and temperature sensation is coming from the opposite side pain and temperature loss of the body so actually there is no weakness on the body when there is a lesion in the lateral medullary area you have sensory loss on the face sensory loss on the opposite side of the body and patient can have eighth cranial nerve uh, fifth cranial nerve and uh, eye involvement can be there ninth and tenth cranial nerve can be there now these are the clinical findings of uh, lateral medullary syndrome they can have nausea vomiting vertigo nystagmus 
they can have loss of uh, taste sensation ataxia can be there facial numbness or facial sensory loss can be there horner syndrome can be there small people con- uh, and small pupil and uh, small eyes contralateral loss of pain and temperature spinothalamic tract is involved they are coming from the opposite side palatal myoclonus hoarseness and dysphagia due to 9th and 10th cranial nerves now horner syndrome you can remember with uh, this uh, mnemonic that is sampled sympathetic nerve injury descending sympathetic tract involvement and hydrosis loss of hemifacial sweating myosis small constricted pupil ptosis drooping or falling of upper eyelid you have to mainly differentiate this problem from uh, third nerve palsy because third nerve palsy can have complete ptosis here only partial ptosis and third nerve palsy normally they have a dilated pupil uh, but here there will be normal or constricted pupil loss of ciliospinal reflex ciliospinal reflex is dilatation of the ipsilateral pupil on when the pressure or uh, pain is applied on the neck face and the upper trunk and ophthalmosis small sunken eyes that is also a feature of horner syndrome so remember it as sample you can see here horner syndrome ptosis that is partial ptosis small pupil and hydrosis uh, and hyperemia so these are the important features of uh, horner syndrome whereas third nerve palsy that have similar type of finding but they can have complete ptosis here it is partial ptosis and ophthalmoplegia is there movements of eye is reduced but here there is no ophthalmoplegia normally in third nerve palsy because of surgical lesions like uh, aneurysm trauma all these thing you can get dilated pupil whereas in diabetes induced uh, uh, stro- uh, like a uh, vasa nervorum involvement lesion you can get normal pupil also now there are lot of causes for uh, this type of lesions in the medulla now, commonest we have seen that it is due to uh stroke or ischemic uh, lesion but there are other causes like tumors uh, trauma uh, syringomyelia demyelination uh, myelitis uh, so many other causes also can be there dissection uh, carcinomas all these things also can produce sometimes uh, lateral medullary syndrome but the commonest cause is acute stroke posterior circulation stroke then demyelinating uh, diseases like multiple sclerosis then tumors can produce this problem and trauma also can produce this type of problem but trauma exactly you don't get uh, lateral medullary syndrome you get a group of disorders because uh, in trauma larger areas are involved uh, in brain stem now you can see here uh, lateral medullary syndrome mri finding high signal focus in the dorsolateral aspect of the right half of the medulla oblongata so you can see iram arc shows a uh, uh, ischemic uh, problem there so mri is very very important when we are suspecting a case with lateral medullary syndrome lateral medullary syndrome normally present to er with uh, giddiness uh postural syncope all these things uh, we can uh, have a differential diagnosis like uh, uh, vestibular neuronitis or uh, uh, some other uh, eighth cranial evolution so to differentiate that we have to take an mri because posterior circulation lesions cannot be picked up by simple ct scan we need to have mri for this now third nerve palsy versus Horner syndrome that is very important because Horner syndrome you have ptosis third nerve palsy also you have ptosis third nerve palsy complete ptosis is there so eyes are completely having eyelids are completely covering the eyes midriasis dilated pupil but rarely medical cause for third nerve palsy can have normal pupil also because uh, these fibers which supply uh, pupil are spared due to Uh, this in fact but surgical lesions like aneurysm or bleed all these things uh, patient uh, have 
uh, dilated pupil. Extraocular muscle involvement is there in third nerve palsy. No reaction to light reflux, that is also very important. Whereas Horner syndrome, partial ptosis, meiosis, that is small pupil, extraocular muscles are not involved. In ophthalmos, small eyes and hydrosis, no sweating, absence of ciliospinal reflux. So this is the these are the differentiating features between third nerve palsy and uh, Horner syndrome. Third nerve palsy, the lesion may be little higher up, it may be in the um, uh, midbrain, uh, but whereas uh, Horner syndrome, the lesion is in the uh, uh, medulla. Ptosis is lagging of upper eyelid. It has got two distinct etiologies. One is sympathetic innervation to the eye supplied by Muller muscle a small muscle that elevates the eyelid that is damaged. Second thing is the third nerve palsy innervates a larger muscle that elevates the eyelid that is levator palpebrae uh, muscle. So the problem in third nerve palsy it is a complete uh, weakness because a larger muscle is involved there whereas in Horner syndrome a small muscle that is Muller's muscle is involved so only a small weakness is there. So minimal weakness in Horner syndrome, maximal weakness in third nerve palsy. So the ptosis from third nerve palsy is very severe than Horner syndrome. So there are a lot of causes for ptosis that in that uh, in an emergency room we have to think that bilateral ptosis is very important for an ER physician because bilateral uh, <coughs> ptosis can be seen in snake bite like cobra, crate bite, botulism. Uh, Eaton Lambert syndrome, myasthenia gravis, uh, myopathic ptosis, all these things. Whereas third nerve palsy, ca palsy can be surgical condition like compression of uh, aneurysm of posterior communicating artery, posterior cerebral artery, internal carotid artery, compression of angus of temporal lobe during cerebral herniation. That is very very important because herniation is a uh, uh, is an emergency. So, herniation, uh, if we can pick up early, we can save the patient's life. Covers, cavernous sinus thrombosis, then third nerve medical palsy, third nerve palsy without involvement of pupil in diabetic due to nerve infarct. That is a vasa nervorum is involved there. Then Horner syndrome. So, Horner syndrome and third nerve palsy due to surgical causes, third nerve palsy due to medical cause and Horner syndrome. So, third nerve palsy due to surgical causes, you have complete ptosis, extraocular uh, ophthalmoplegia, ocular muscle ophthalmoplegia is there, pupils are dilated. Whereas, in third nerve palsy due to medical causes, you have complete ptosis, extraocular muscles are involved. So, there will be difficulty in moving the eyelids, eyeballs, then you have normal pupil. Whereas in Horner syndrome, partial ptosis, no extraocular muscles are involved and pupil also normal. So we have discussed about one of the important condition that is uh, lateral medullary syndrome. Most of the time lateral medullary syndrome is due to ischemia or acute stroke. We have to remember one important thing because posterior circulation is in a small compressed area. Even if the even if the lesion is very small, patient can deteriorate very fast. It is not like anterior compartment. Posterior compartment is in a closed space, so bleed or infarct, whatever it is, it is in a dangerous area. So we have to be very careful. These patients who is having posterior circulation stroke should be admitted in ICU, monitored properly, because any time they can deteriorate very fast. Respiratory centers are near to medulla. Lot of uh, 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 lot of complications can produced by uh, this type of syndromes. Ninth and tenth cranial nerve can be involved because uh, uh, in the, it is in the medulla. The centers are in medulla. Patient can even aspirate because of ninth and tenth cranial nerve involvement. So we have to be very careful. And stroke, yeah, whether it is posterior circulation stroke or anterior circulation stroke or uh, middle circulation stroke, wherever it is. The treatment is same. We have to thrombolize the patient if the patient comes less than four and a half hours. That also we have to be very careful. Aspirin, clopidogrel, statins, and thrombolysis. Uh, if it is a uh, like demyelinating condition like uh, multiple sclerosis, again MRI, then 
we have to go for treatment options like plasma paralysis or something like that we are not discussing that here we are we are only trying to localize the lesion in the medulla clinical findings of lateral medullary syndrome thank you